Okay, so what's going to come with the Mac Grills Mobile Wi-Fi purchase is this chip. This is the Mac Grills Mobile Wi-Fi chip that you're going to be plugging into the back of the Pellet Boss control and an antenna. And there's also a antenna wire and lug that um, you'll be using to install the antenna onto the grill. First thing we're going to do is unplug the grill from the power outlet. The next step is to unscrew the side panel slash hopper lid to access the back of the circuit board. So on the back of the chip, there's a missing pin, fourth one down on the left hand side. That corresponds with a filled in missing hole on the pellet boss. So you're simply going to line up those pins and snap the Macrill's mobile Wi-Fi chip into place. So to install the antenna, you push the plug through the hole on the left hand side of your power cord and then attach the antenna underneath, tightening it into the lug. Alright, once we have the Wi-Fi module connected to the back of the controller and the power cord plugged back in, we're going to turn on the controller and we're going to arrow to the screen that says web control and currently it says check SID. This is the screen that you're going to use to turn the web control on or off. But before we can do that, we're going to scroll to the next screen which shows grill ID. This is your unique grill ID that comes with the Wi-Fi module. Um, this grill ID is what you'll be using on Macrills Mobile to register your grill. So in this particular case, we show the grill ID there and these are the screens we're going to use to set up our SSID and our passphrase. Or if we have a web security, we're going to put in our web key in this area. This screen here is to clear the SSID or the passphrase or the web key. So if you made a mistake and you just want to start all over, you can hit the set button on any of these and it will clear those particular screens. So let's say my SSID is Bob. We would simply hit the set key and then arrow up or down to find the letters that we're looking for. There are lowercase letters as you can see here. All of these different symbols that some people use in their security settings. Um, and so we've offered all of those onto the screen as well. Most routers will have just simple letters and numbers, but if not, if you need these symbols, they're in there as well. And there's also numbers, zero through nine, that you can utilize, as well as capital letters. So in this case, if my SSID was capitalized on the B, I would go to the capital B and hit the set point. So again, what I'm going to do is go through each letter or number, whatever my SSID is, and put it into the controller as shown. This takes a while, but you only have to do this one time. In order to clear the letters that are already on the screen, like in this case of the default, you can either go to the SSID clear and start over with a clear box or there is a um, set point here that shows a blank screen in that particular slot and you can 
set it to that blank screen and move on to clear out any letters. And it's important to note that this has to be exactly as shown on your SSID. So there would be uh, right after the nine is the blank. So we could go ahead and blank out anything past our SSID or go and clear it first and then enter it, which is what I would recommend doing. Again, sometimes the router itself that you have has a sticker on the back that shows the SSID that you can use. Um, if you are an experienced uh, person or you have a network provider or IT guy that sets up your security and you've changed it to something specific to you or a unique code, then you'll have to put that in exactly as shown. Again, uppercase letters and lowercase letters, symbols, uh, numbers, all those things have to be exactly set up as shown on your label or whatever your SSID is that you set up to secure your wireless router. Um, no blank spaces unless they're again within your passphrase or SSID. Once you have the SSID set into place you'll do the same thing for your passphrase. Now if you have a web key instead of a passphrase you'll have to put it in the web key mode. Now if you put it in both places it won't hurt anything or if you have the opposite one blank that won't hurt anything either but you have to if you have a web key security you have to put in the web key code in that particular field if you have passphrase then you would put in the passphrase in this particular field and it's the same scenario where you would just change the passphrase from a number or a letter or a symbol or whatever it is that um, you have on the back of your router label or that you've created yourself as a security. So in this case, if my passphrase was M234, then this would be correct. Once I've set up my SSID and passphrase, the down arrow will exit that screen. And again, I'm going to use this grill ID right here to register my grill with Mac Grills Mobile. Before I do this, I would set up my passphrase and SSID, and then I would go to this web control screen, and I would change it from off to on. Now if my passphrase and SSID are not correct, it will display it there. Like in this case, the SSID isn't correct, so it says check SSID. If I didn't type in my passphrase or my web key correctly, it would state that, check passphrase. Once it connects, it will just simply display on. So before it would say off when you first came to this screen, and then you're simply going to change it from off to on. And if the on stays on in this lower part of the screen, then you're ready to enter your grill ID into Mac Grills Mobile. You will not be able to enter your Grill ID into Macros Mobile until you have a successful connection with the web control screen. In other words, this states on. Once that happens, then you're ready to enter your SSID into Macros Mobile and from there you'll be able to control the grill wirelessly. Now some things to note. If I change the set point on the controller itself. Let's say I go from smoke to 200 manually on the controller. It's going to turn the web control off. Any functions that I do on the controller itself will disconnect the Wi-Fi. Um, the purpose of that is to not have conflicting information on the pellet boss uh, controlling your Mac grill. So once you've turned the web control on, you won't do anything else on the 
Pellet Boss controller. All of your changes, timers, meat probes, all of those things will be done on Macrills Mobile via the Wi-Fi. So we wanted to talk about this screen a little bit, which is where most people might get hung up. When you've typed in a username and password, it's going to come to this register your grill screen. You have to make sure that the Wi-Fi control module is plugged in and your SSID and passphrase are correct and the web control screen is turned from off to on and stays on. That shows a connection to your router. Once those things have happened, you can come to this screen, type in next, and right here is where you'll be entering your grill ID, which we showed you earlier on the controller. This grill ID is a unique number to your Wi-Fi module. No one else can access this. Um, there can only be one registered on Mac Grills Mobile. So it's important that you get it exactly right with the capital letters and the numbers in the right sequence. Once you've typed in your grill ID in this section, then you'll be able to access all of the features of Mac Grills mobile website. Hi, this is Mac Daddy, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Mac Grills mobile Wi-Fi module. This will actually be connected to the back of your Pellet Boss controller. We're going to send a set of instructions uh, with the installation as well as some um, instructions on the website itself and how it operates. Um, it's pretty intuitive and straightforward, um, but I just want to kind of give a rundown basics of what you're going to get when you purchase this um, wireless control unit. So again, you're going to get a Wi-Fi module chip that plugs into the back of your controller and an antenna. There's a hole already installed in the grill for this antenna. And once you've done that installation, we have a little short video to help you with that as well as the instructions for that. Then you'll be able to control your grill wirelessly. A few things to note. One is that if you have a current Mac grill that you've already purchased before the Wi-Fi module was available, you're going to have to update your controller to the newest version. The way you can check that is to press and hold the select button or the five button controllers you can press and hold the up arrow for 10 seconds and this will get you into the maintenance screen and be able to tell you which version you're on. You will need to be on version 2.3 in order to utilize the Wi-Fi module. If you have a grill that has an older version, we will send you a update module in order to update your controller before installing the Wi-Fi chip. So uh, we'll do all of that here or your dealer will help you with that as well. Um, and we'll have some serial number records of which grills are um, already on 2.3 so if that's the case then you'll be able to skip this step completely. Um, but that's important to know that you have to have version 2.3 or higher in order to use the uh, Wi-Fi module. The other thing that we want to talk a little bit about is actually connecting to the website. So you have to go through all the installation instructions, um, attach the Wi-Fi module to the controller, set up your SSID and passphrase on the controller, have a successful web control on screen before you can log into Mac Grills Mobile and register a grill. Once you have all that stuff done and you register your grill, it will connect to it wirelessly and then from that point forward you can monitor and control your grill. The other thing that we want to talk a little bit about in the beginning is what exactly this is doing. So once you have a connection with the grill, you will be able to control it with the wireless device, whether it be an iPad, an iPhone, your laptop, desktop. The Pellet Boss control, in a sense, in this mode becomes a slave. So everything that you do on the Macrills mobile website will 
tell the controller to do that. So let's say I want to run a uh, timer. I'm going to run a timer on Macros Mobile, not on the controller. So if I'm running a timer on Macros Mobile and I go outside and I look at the grill, there will not be a timer running on the Pellet Boss control. It's only running on Macros Mobile. If I change the temperature, I will change it on Macros Mobile, not on the controller itself. And it will simply just send the information to the controller. Same with uh, cooking programs. If I set up a cooking program, I'm going to utilize those from Macrills Mobile, not from the controller. So if I have a cooking program running, and I go out and I look at the Pellet Boss controller, it will not be running a cooking program on the controller itself, only on the mobile site. So in a sense, the controller becomes a slave to Macrills Mobile when you're in the Wi-Fi mode. If I change anything on the controller itself, it will disconnect the Wi-Fi uh, so that we don't have any conflicting information coming from Macrills Mobile versus you manually entering in, let's say, a new set point temperature. So it's important to note that if you go out and change the temperature on your grill, it's going to disconnect the Wi-Fi and if you're then looking at your Wi-Fi connection, it's going to say connection lost. So. Those types of things um, are important to kind of understand the workings of uh, Macros Mobile and the Wi-Fi module. Again, if you don't turn the Wi-Fi module web control on, then you won't have a connection to Macros Mobile and the controller will just simply operate as normal. Uh, it's also important to note that we disabled some of the screens on the controller when in Wi-Fi mode. So again, we talked about the user programs or we're now calling them cooking programs. If you have the web control on, the web, the cooking programs will not uh, show up on the control screen any longer. They'll simply be ran through Macrills Mobile. So it's a very exciting uh, adventure that you're about to partake upon with um, the new Wi-Fi controlling of the Macrill. Um, it's a very innovative process that we've created to keep the security tight as well as give you lots of options that we weren't able to do with the controller itself due to the screen size being so small. So if you have router issues, you can contact us and we can give you limited support on routers. There we will have a list on our website of known routers that we know work. Um, most routers, if yours doesn't work, can be purchased for you know, anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred dollars depending on the ones that you want. Um, that's an important scenario when deciding to purchase um, the Macros Mobile Wi-Fi is that um, you may have to have some changes to your current router or the security settings or in some cases if your router is too old or not compatible you may have to purchase a different one completely. Uh, we will try our best to give help with that but we're not IT experts and so um, you may have to consult someone um, whether it be your service provider or an IT professional if um, you're unsuccessful with the connection. Uh, we will support you in every way possible uh, to make sure that um, you can get a connection one way or another. So.